Hi, church. Uh, this is your preacher here. Um, I wanted to start by saying whenever or however you're watching this, thank you for tuning in with us. Um, needless to say, <laughs> this is the most interesting and unique sermon that I've ever preached. Uh, and I can honestly say that I've never done anything quite like what we're doing today. Um, it's going to look pretty good for the resume, though. I can say that. Uh, but I, I wanted to let you know, all of our congregation, all of our church family, wow, thank you for being so flexible. Uh, it, it, I, I'm preaching to an empty auditorium right now, uh, but if you were sitting out here with us, I would have you hold up your finger and everybody do a little one of these and say with me, blessed are the flexible, for they do not break. And that's what's happening with us here this morning. Look, we're being flexible, we're bending, but we're not breaking. Um, and so I think of the scripture where Paul says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. And then he says, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or living in want, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And I think that's our verse right now as a church family, that no matter what situation it is, we're going to learn to be content, not because we can do it on our own, but because we have a heavenly father that can do it with us and has the strength to get us through any and every situation. So what I want us to do uh, right now is, I, I don't think there's a more appropriate way to start this all off than to say a prayer together. So let's go to our Father in prayer. God, we thank you. And we love you and we praise you right now. And, and while our world is, is scared, uh, a lot of our world is panicked, God, we, while there, there might be some fear in us, God, there is so much more confidence because of who you are and what you do for us. And God, we know that you are bigger than anything we'll ever face. And that includes a virus. It includes any health situation. It includes any difficulty we face, any sin we battle. God, you are bigger. And we trust you and we love you. And we thank you for being with us. Guide us as we continue our journey uh, through the next several weeks, being flexible and figuring this thing out together as a church family. Uh, God, strengthen us, be with our leaders, be with our nation, be with our country, um, be with our world right now as, as we all struggle to figure out uh, where to go from here. And uh, God, especially as our church family figures out how to keep faith at the forefront of everything that we do. We love you, and this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I know some of you, you're probably in your homes, uh, you're watching as a family, maybe you're just watching by yourself in your living room, uh, maybe it's a smaller group that's come together, I I'm assuming nine or less, uh, but you're watching this, however you're watching it, whenever you're watching it, morning, afternoon, evening, uh, on a sunny day, rainy day, thank you uh, for being here. I know some of you are probably like uh, Ray and Janelle, I know, are, are doing their own song service and, and then watching the sermon later. And uh, maybe some of you are, are watching the songs that have been posted online and singing with uh, what we have for you. However you're doing this, again, thank you for being so flexible. Um, and, and, and I have to say, wow, what a beautiful living room you have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to go there once. We'll move on. Uh, I, I, I was thinking of this, though, like Todd and, and, and Connie Wheeler, like, look, they probably have the most amazing backyard I've ever seen. Dare I say, they may have the best backyard at Leander Church. Um, and so maybe they're sitting out in their backyard watching this. But what I love is that even when uh, our church family can't meet together in the four walls of a building, we're still together, and, and, and we make this thing happen together as a family. I am so humbled, and I am so thankful to be a part of a congregation and to have a church family that just figures this thing out um, and that works together to make this possible. Look, there's been so many meetings 
uh, hours of prayer, hours spent by your elders, your ministers. Uh, Ray, with our technology, he's here. You, don't, you can't see him right now, but he's taking care of me right now. Uh, Janet it has been answering hundreds and hundreds, literally, of phone calls of people from our church asking questions, what are we doing? Uh, people from the community asking for help and, and figuring this out. Um, and then every one of our church family who's not here at the office but has been making phone calls and text messages and sending encouragements to each other. I mean, our church family is stronger than ever even when we can't see each other uh, like we can't now. And so here's my encouragement to us. We can and we will do this. And it's because God is bigger than anything. And he can, we can do this because we will rely on his strength. So let's jump right into our lesson this morning. Uh, we're going to continue our study through 1 Peter. You're not off the hook just because of the coronavirus, okay? So if you have your Bibles, please pull them out. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. We're going to jump down into our text here because I really believe Peter has something for us uh, in his book. Um, one of the things I want to emphasize I know I've talked a lot about the suffering that these people are experiencing here in 1 Peter. But one of the things that I've seen that really applies to us is the fact that, that he is, is using some language that really seems to speak to our situation. Look at 1 Peter, actually chapter 1 and verse 1, and it says, To God's elect, and then notice this phrase, strangers in the world scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And, and so he's saying, look, there's these Christians that I'm writing to, and he says, y'all are scattered around everywhere. Does that sound familiar? First, uh, First Peter chapter 2 and verse 11 now says, Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world. That's the only two I've got down here because for time's sake. But man, if you look through First Peter, there's so many times where he's talking about the scattered or the strangers or the aliens. And, and, and I've got to tell you, that sounds a lot like our situation. Peter is writing to a people who are scattered all over the place and are experiencing difficult and unique situations. And man, that just sounds exactly like what we're going through, doesn't it? I, 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 think, I don't think that God has led me to preach through the book of 1 Peter leading up to this coronavirus by accident. I am a firm believer that he has a message for our church family, and we need to hear it right now. And I, I got to tell you have, you, have you ever just opened up your Bible and you're like, God, I, I need you right now, right? I, I need you to speak to me but I don't know where to look. And so maybe you just open up your Bible and, and you flip to a random page and you close your eyes and you say, okay, God, I, I need a verse. And then you take your finger and you, you say, right here. That's what you want to speak to me. You know, and then you open it up and it's like, and you know, one of the weirdest, most obscure scriptures. And you're like, okay, you know, here's another one. Uh, Judas goes and hangs himself. And you're like, oh, that's not obviously what he wants to tell me. Uh, and, and while I don't usually do my Bible study that way, I have done that so many times. And this right now, our study through First Peter, I think that's exactly what God is doing for us. I, I think he's led us to this for a reason. Um, and, and so um, with everything going on, everything in me believes that God wants Leander Church to get this message today. So here's my encouragement. Wayne, Regan, uh, uh, all the Sandoval crew, Vernon, Fran, Reese, Jeannie, and a whole rest of Leander Church family, let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3 and dive in. We're going to start in verse 13. I'm going to read this text to you, and then I'm going to point out three things pretty quickly here that I think Peter's trying to tell us that God is speaking to us in the unique situation we're in. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, and we're going to start in verse 13, and here's what it says. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But if any of you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord and always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give reason to, for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. I love this passage. Um, and, and I really think Peter is, is trying to tell his people three things that they desperately need to hear 
because of the fact that they're scattered throughout and they're experiencing a difficult situation. Number one, he says, verse 13, we are safe. And that's a message they needed to hear and that we need to hear as well. Look at verse 13. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? The readers needed to know, while people may be able to harm my body, because look, they're facing persecution, they're facing all kinds of sufferings, and Peter is saying, people can harm your body, but they can't, they can't control your mind, they can't control your heart, and they cannot control your faith. And I think that's the message that we need to hear as well. No matter what happens to us, no matter the decisions that our country chooses to make, no matter what viruses come our way, no matter what people stand against us in any circumstance, we don't have to fear because they can't harm us. We are safe. And it's not because we're physically safe. It goes much deeper than that. Our faith, our mind, our hearts are safe because God, as I've said before, is bigger. I can't help but think of the Scripture. Hold your, your finger in First Peter and turn to Romans chapter 8. I can't help but think of this Scripture when I think of the fact that we are safe because God has us and He's not going to let us go. Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39. Check this out. He says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? This is a rhetorical question. The answer is assumed. No one. And so then he goes on and explains it again. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? And I'm going to add, or a virus. <laughs> As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Now, here comes the answer. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. That's a truth that Peter's Christians needed to know. And that we need to know right now, no matter where we are, no matter what we're facing, we're safe. Number two, not only are we safe, look now at verse uh, 14. We are blessed. Verse 14 says, but even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Uh, look, the readers were facing, like I've talked about, an uncertain time, just like we are today. And Peter wanted to shift their focus off of their suffering and onto their blessing. And he said, if you focus on your suffering at hand, you're going to fail. But if you're suffering for what's right, if you're suffering for what's good, you're blessed. And you see that, that shift in focus there. So even in the face of difficulty, we're blessed. Time and time again, Scripture tells us that God has blessed us in so many different ways. But my favorite verse of, of blessing is in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. And it says that my God will meet all of your needs. Now, it's not according to the way you want them to be met. It says it's according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. He's going to bless us. Because he loves us. And he's not just going to bless us with good things. He's going to bless us with the best things. Uh, a scripture that I love is in Romans 8. And, and where it says that um, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? And his argument is, look, I've given you my son, Jesus. My most precious possession. And if I gave you Jesus, don't you know I'm going to take care of you now? Why would I not want to help you and take care of you? And so number one, we're safe. But number two, we are blessed. And number three, Peter wants us to know, as you look into verse 15, we are confident, not fearful. Verse 15, but in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a, the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and love. I, I love that part here where he says, set apart Christ as Lord, always be prepared to give an answer. I'm sorry, I've read the wrong verse here. I'm going to go back up. 
it's to the end of verse 14. I was wondering what was going on here. Look, we have a lot of technical difficulties. We're making a lot of mistakes. Blessed are the flexible, for they did not break. It's this part up here in verse 14. It's the second part, and it says, Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. That's the verse that I wanted to read here. We are confident. And I love how he says it. Do not fear what they fear. So others are scared around them, and Peter's telling you, you don't have to fear what they fear. You can be confident. Have you ever been worried or scared? That's a silly question, isn't it? Have you ever been worried or scared to go somewhere uh, or to do something? And, and, and the situation doesn't change, but somebody says, hey, I'll go with you, and suddenly you're okay? Uh, I, I think about all the times Avery and I, like, I, I'm at home, I've got to go somewhere or do something, and it's like, I'm kind of nervous to do this. And I go, hey, babe, would you go with me? <laughs> and when she says, yeah, I'll go with you, it's like, I, I just suddenly feel better. I think about, you know, playing hide and seek as a kid or um, any kind of game. I, I'm scared to hide by myself in that dark, scary place. But if somebody hides with me, now all of a sudden I'm okay. The situation's still the same, but somebody's with me. And I trust that I'm not alone. And some reason that just gives me confidence in my soul. God tells us over and over again, we are never alone. I mean, you think about the promises of God in Scripture where he's just telling you over and over again, I'm with you, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you, I am there. You can't flee from my presence, you can't go to the heavens, you can't descend to, to, to depths of Sheol, and, and I, I'm there. And my right hand's going to lead you and guide you. He's with us, and that's a promise that they needed to know. And that gives us confidence. Even in scary situations, we don't have to be scared because the person that's sitting next to us isn't just a friend. The person next, sitting next to us is the God who breathed all of this into creation and into existence and spoke the word, and it was all there. Our God is amazing, and he's with us. I, I, I can't even, you can't even say his name without being reminded of this promise. He, he says uh, his name will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Every time we say his name, we are reminded Jesus is with us. We're not alone. And so Peter, man, don't, can't you tell? God's led us right to this passage. This is what we need. In our study of 1 Peter, Peter's message to his Christians is the same message God's bringing to us. Number one, you are safe. Number two, we are blessed. And number three, we are confident. Let's pray right now together. God, thank you. We praise you. We love you. Uh, we magnify your name right now. God, you give us a hope that the rest of the world might not understand. Just your presence and your promise of protection to keep us safe, to give us blessing, to keep us confident. God, you are so good to us. And right now we cry out, we need you. But we thank you that you are here. You are with each one of us right now in our homes, uh, watching wherever we're at. God, we are together and we are connected and we are safe, blessed, and confident because you are with us. And so God, give us wisdom and give us strength as we continue to be flexible through this strange situation. And God, help us figure out how to best be the light in a dark world and to spread your goodness to others. Guide us, guard us, direct us. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I, I want to end the same way every week. And so uh, I, I want to give you a little blessing here. So we're going to do that. And, uh, and then I'll see you again soon. It comes from Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. I love you and look forward to seeing you all again real soon.